industry and they started picking up bricks and there was very little bottles about because they were all been thrown and broken but I think I found one or two and it was then they got started getting wired into the wired into the Brits uh, in them days. So teen early teenage years, I eh? No, this is still seven, eight, nine years of age. Right. Um, getting getting wired into the Brits. And you know, in that street as well again the 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 spirit, the community spirit was unreal. Although I have to say I started to realise that there was diff- then I started to realise there was different Republican organisations. Whereas before I just really knew of the provisionals, then I started to realise there was different organisations, you know. And when you think of the co- in context of the day, like I remember, again, I'm a just sitting, eating a lollipop, watching IRA volunteers training, men and women, just openly training in the streets. I remember, you know, volunteers, you know, coming and going, and all the faces are long gone now, but I remember, you know, them coming and going and getting wired in and stuff as well. So I remember all those things. You know, and then I got to a stage where, you know, it was just regular getting wired into the state, you know, fighting against the state. You know, whatever a child, who, a child could do, you did. Do you know what I mean? And there was many times that I, I got to try and get away from it. I went into the Falls Library to, to, to read. Just, I, like, I enjoyed reading, even though I had stuff made in dyslexia. I, I liked reading. I went to the Falls Swimmers. I went to a youth club called St. Augustine's Youth Club. Youth club which is next to the, the Falls Levy. I think it's a, a, a dole thing now, a, a, an employment thing now. And I remember the times of standing on top of the Levy, you know, the kid with the wee balaclava on, he used to have these wee binoculars just standing there waiting, because they used to come out of the of a street the way down the Falls, but you see them coming up, you know what I mean? And then hidden was the armory. I and others from adjacent streets were going to use and they come up and you just get wired in them. And when I'm talking about kids getting wired in them, I'm talking about kids, right, who have no fear. I'm talking about the the, 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 the tanks, I'm getting them to show you, tanks used to come up and the kids used to just grab whatever they can and go right up to them. And the older kids were no big beer barrel things and just bang them off. Other kids would jump on top of them, were big uh, poles trying to get at the, you know, the, 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 the mirrors or whatever. Have you. Just, there was no fear, they just, Sheer, sheer, the sheer passion of them and of the of the kids wanting to get into them was unbelievable. So if that passion was there as kids, imagine the passion of the older teenagers and other volunteers. I take it this time you became more politically conscious as a Republican. Well, I didn't know what Republicanism was. All I knew was there was these people who were brutalizing me and my people which I seen my people at the time and I still see myself, no matter what my plague party, I still, plague organization, I still myself, see myself as part of a community that I grew up in but my politics have moved to understand it on the basis of class but in them days I didn't know what Republicanism was, all I knew was these people were calling me a nigger, mm-hmm. they were beating my relatives, they were shooting dead people who I knew and that's what it was. I didn't understand what Republicanism was. I didn't understand what Socialism was. And, you know, no one wakens up in the morning and go, I'm a Republican or I'm a Socialist. You, you wake up and go, this is wrong. What's happened? What am I going to do against this or to stop this? That's what I, I've learned in the, in the process of struggle. And throughout the years, I've seen so many people who I knew, you know, being beaten, brutalized and dying, you know, uh, you know, I remember a, a young child in Twinburg being shot dead by plastic balls. I remember, and I sat here years ago watching on TV screens when I seen myself as a child looking at the coffin of Bobby Sands. Right, and that threw back so many memories to me. That's when I actually moved to Twinburg. What did you mean when you moved to Twinburg? We would have moved to Twinburg, and I would say late '80s, early '81. Right. What and school were you at that time you are in uh, Stone's secondary school? St- no, Stone's no. opinions. I didn't go to secondary school until I was 11. Uh, but I was about 10 years of age, um, late 80s, early day one. And it was a case of, we lived in what was called rabbit burrows, right? Um, because they were so dark and dingy. You know what I mean? It was outside toilets then. And there was probably five kids 
crammed into a squalid room. There was no real no really no hope of work and bad conditions. A lot of times um staff out to get work and I remember one occasion where he came back and it was brilliant. You know, he came back and I got a big dartboard and a bag of Marley's and we 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 soldiers and the family all got together and it was in memory now Ashton man because it was such a hard struggle that Twinbrook was a new housing estate built at this time, was it? Twinbrook this was still in the, in Sebastian Street, right? Mm-hmm. But when we when we moved to Twinbrook, um it was a different world all the guys, Sean. You know, when we got there there was I drove up we were driving up in a van and you just seen rabbits and foxes. It was still in West Belfast per se. But it was a different world. There was fields, there was rabbits, foxes, everything. And you were going, Jesus, this is brain. But it was from the frying pan and the fire because that's where the family of Bobby Sand lived. And I remember getting out, because we used to have, a, uh, from a bedroom window, you could climb out the window and jump onto the coal bunker. And when he died, I remember climbing down, jumping on the coal bunker, going out. And you had bin lids, which were like a metal. And you went out and you banged, do, 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 bang the bin lids. And then all hell broke loose. Then, and... Even then, you know, you, you still watch the the, 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 the RA train in the streets, but also the Brits would come in in these days in helicopters. Because you, you could look out your bedroom window and you could see them coming into the field to come and jump in, out of helicopters mm-hmm. and coming out of helicopters. And again, then days the doors left, left open. I remember again many occasions, this was when we started moving into my early teens, and many occasions being chased through, through, through houses and all the Brits after the wee back bastard again, do you know what I mean? And all those different types of things. So, you know, it was brutal times. And this is an experience not only of yourself, but growing up with your friends and... Oh yeah, yeah, that, 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 that was a that, common, that, common experience. Right? It was a common experience by everybody was being brutalised and beaten. Some way. Stuff like that in some way or other. And there was, no, there was not nobody who wasn't affected by it. It mightn't have been deaths in the families, but it was brutality. It was even just the small things when you were walking about and they were, they were hustling, you were stopping you, you were searching you, you were slapping you, they were cursing at you, you were spitting at you. All those days played their part in people standing together. And that's how no doubt about it. The IRA and the provisional IRA in them days, you know, they were successful in many ways because they had the support of the communities, of the mothers, the fathers, the brothers, the sisters, and even the children. Right? They had that support. And that's why they were so successful over the years in their own terms. Oh, that's you know I mean? that level of support we were yeah. able to sustain. Yeah. Um, so we're into the 1980s now. Mm-hmm. Um, Twinber, I take it you moved on to secondary school, yeah? I moved to secondary school, Sean. I went to um, La Salle in Orange's Town. Um, I remember I had to actually leave. Same school as himself, but anyway. <laughs> I had to leave some Finians and go to the Instant Luke School. Um, it was too far to travel. In them days, the black taxis, you know, it wasn't the same as now. Whether in them days, when you were a kid, you put your hand out and the black taxi driver decided where they wanted to go. And very few of them wanted to go up out, out into Twinberg. So I could, I could be standing there for hours, drenched, and you couldn't get home. So I got to a stage where I just got too much trying to walk home from the Falls Road to Twinbrook. Um, and now I went to Sunnook School, and then I went to La Salle. La Salle was a, was a good school, very, very good sports school, very good academic school. And even though I had my problems, I only started to realise year, year later, and, you know, my dyslexia and stuff. My school report at that time said that I excelled. In many things, but I still failed my 11 plus. And the reason I failed my 11 plus, I came to understand years later, was a lot to do with the material circumstances of my life. You know, at the end of the day, you know, there was a war going on where you lived. There was still the social and economic deprivation at the same time as well. And on top of that, people didn't, many people didn't see education as a way forward simply because the Catholics weren't getting jobs. Mm-hmm. And end the story, do you know what I mean? So the, the 11 plus still. Um, targets those uh, from social and economic uh, deprived areas, maybe the Shanker Road or the Falls Road and academic selection and that should that should go. You know I, mean? I see I see the eleven plus now has been scrapped although although basically it's been replaced by another form of academic selection so basically it continues under name. Um, mm. grammar schools still um, have introduced entrance um, examinations but That's right. um, so last Al then um, did you leave it like most people suppose then this about 15, 16 or did you stay on and do A-levels or what? I got a couple of O-levels and then 
I was kept on for a 